Was this the first PC? Many say that it was. Let's learn a little bit more about this neat machine and check out a micro-sized kit based on it. So the year was um, September 1970, and I had $6,000, a little bit out other. And so I thought, you know, if I were ever going to build that small computer, uh, now's the time to do it. Finally decided that the way to go was to emphasize an educational computer that was fun to use, but sufficiently complicated and so on. So that if you did use it and you did program it, you had a good idea of what a real computer was like. Here are some fun facts about the Kimback One. As you just saw, it was created by John Blankenbaker. Designed by him in 1970, production and sales started in 1971. It has no CPU. It uses discrete TTL logic. It has 256 bytes of memory. Since the memory was accessed in a serial fashion, it averaged under 1,000 instructions per second. Fewer than 50 were ever produced. The Kimpak Corporation folded in 1973. Fewer than 16 units are known to exist today. After learning about the Kimpak, I really wanted to get my hands on one. However, I knew I'd never likely own one because of the scarcity and the prices they did go for when they became available. Thankfully, some crafty nerds exist out there, like Chris Davis from Adwater and Stir. I love that name, by the way. But he created and sells a micro Kimback 1 kit. It's powered by an Atmega 328 and runs Mark Wilson's open source code. It was not a hard sell for me. I ordered one right away. This kit sat around for about a year, but just recently I went ahead and opened things up. It's got this nice faceplate. The PCBs right there. Got some LEDs and a switch. The keycaps right here. The ICs. The serial module. The real-time clock module. The hex standoffs. The switches. USB cable. The nice metal case. And these nice metal machined aluminum ends. On the day of the build, I laid everything out once again to make sure it was all there. It started out putting the resistor arrays in. Then the crystal. Then the IC sockets. You can see here, I kind of catch the corners of the sockets to try to keep them from moving around much. Then I come back and solder all the pins. Next were the headers for the serial module and real-time clock module. Then the switches were installed in the front and soldered on the back. The LEDs were inserted on the front of the PCB and following the instructions a spacer and faceplate were temporarily installed with the standoffs to help hold the LEDs in place and then they were soldered. The excess leads were trimmed off the LEDs. Next, it was time to install the ICs in their sockets. The serial module was next. Followed up by the real-time clock module. Then the on-off switch was wired up.
I connected up the USB to give it some power, and then we did the first test. Here it goes. Looks like it works. The switch was temporarily removed, and I gave things a good scrubbing with some alcohol and a toothbrush. Now it's time to install the spacer and faceplate and standoffs and switch for the last time. Then the USB pigtail chassis connector was installed that connects to the serial module. The connector was plugged in, the assembly was inserted into the case and secured with the screws on the back. Then these nice machined aluminum pieces were mounted. Now time for the keycaps. And last but not least, the little protective feet. Now let's give it a whirl. The directions have this nice little example program to put in, but it's an octal. This first row of numbers under the LED are our little guide for octal. Octal is three digits. That would be 001. This would be 005. This would be 045. And this would be 245. Okay, let's give this program a go. Oh, oh, 003. Set. Clear. 004. Store. Clear. 103. Store. Clear. 001. Store. Clear. 134. Store. Clear. 200. Store. Clear. 003. Store. Clear. 001. Store. Clear. Zero four three. Store clear. Zero one zero. Store clear. Three four four. Store clear. And then zero zero four. Store start. And look. We've just programmed in a binary counter and it should go from, I guess, 0 to 256, then loops back around. Pretty doggone neat. Can you imagine what it was like back in the day to really flip the switches to get a bootloader or, or something even more complex into a machine? That must have been something else. The manual also references many built-in programs. One is this blinking lights one. And you just load that by holding stop and five there and then hit start. And there you've got your blinking lights. Everybody loves the blinking lights. There's also uh, some neat clock programs in there that make use of the real time clock. I think I'm going to check those out later. I've got to read the documentation and see how to set it. But that'd be a neat little thing to have on your desk, a binary clock. So what do you think? If you'd never heard of the Kimbat before, I hope this uh, kind of piques your interest and you'll look a little deeper into the story. I just kind of skimmed the surface here. There's a lot of other folks that are a lot better at the historical type things than I. Just tons of information. All you got to do is search for it. And the big question, is the Kimback the first PC? I don't care. I think that it is just an important part of the history of computing. There's probably a lot of disagreements that come up about what came first or second or whatever. But as far as the year... This was available for purchase commercially, 1971, and it was sized or directed at being used by one person kind of at a time. That's personal. Technically, it's a computer. I don't know. Growing up, reading things as I got more interested in computers history, it was always blasted that the Altair was the first PC. And I think the Altair is great, but I mean, it's almost like apples and oranges. They're different things. No matter what you think about what was first for a particular category, I do think that most people could agree that the Kimback is a very interesting system. And this micro Kimback and other similar projects 
or a nice way for us to be able to play with that little bit of history. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.